Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the French Open Final between Carlos Alcaraz and Alexander Zverev. First off, it was an amazing match, uh, great competition, great tension, um, especially when you, can, you, when you consider what was at stake for both players. You have Alexander Zverev, who's had an excellent career already, but the one major thing he's missing in his career is a Grand Slam victory. He was going for his first in the final, and Carlos Alcaraz was already going for his third Grand Slam championship, but specifically his first Grand Slam on clay. So it was a very exciting match. It meant a lot, a lot to both players, probably a little bit more to Zverev, but uh, tennis victories don't necessarily go to who needs the win more. It, it goes to whoever earns the victory, and it's not always very evenly shared. Uh, but anyway, I think it was a great match. I think in some ways it was a more interesting matchup, than the one between Alcaraz and Sinner. This is because I think Alcaraz and Sinner are a little bit more similar to each other than Alcaraz and Zverev are, especially, re especially recently. Sinner's been adding a lot of things to his game to help uh, propel him to higher levels in the sport. I think for a while, he was predominantly a baseline player and that was pretty much the whole of his game. But I think uh, Sinner and his team, including Darren Cahill, and his other coach, they've been looking to add other things into his game, a little bit similar to the things Alcaraz was doing to have success, including using more of the drop shot and finishing points more at the net. And I think it's been a great advantage to Sinner, and he's now number one in the world, so it certainly pays off. Um, but when you watch Alcaraz and Sinner play, it was very much a battle of being first to attack. Both those players, the goal of the match is to get on attack as soon as possible and try to control the point. With Zverev, it's a little bit different. He's not as aggressive or as an attacking player as Sinner or Alcaraz. He is much more of a consistent baseline grinder. He's not going to necessarily look to take the ball early or go on attack. He wants to stay neutral from the baseline, keep hitting a high heavy ball, and he likes to move very well from the baseline. So it's very difficult to hit past him, and he's not necessarily going to hurt you with one shot but he's going to wear you down over the course of the match with his consistency and his weight of shot. And he's very patient too. Um, and I think in many ways that's a credit to Zverev. He's very difficult to beat because his ball is very heavy. He's very consistent from the baseline on both wings. He's kind of your stereotypical, classic, grindy baseline player. Um, he's not necessarily going to blow you away with any shots. He has some power, but he prefers to hit more of a rally ball and stay neutral in the point and either wear his opponent down or try to be the first, uh, be the person to draw an error from the opponent, make them go for too much. And that also plays into Zverev's game because he's a great mover and he plays deep behind the baseline and he relies more on his weight of shot than taking the ball early. Because he plays deep, it's very difficult for players to hit the ball by him. His shot lands deep and he plays deep behind the baseline. So it's very difficult to overpower him or rush him on a shot. And because he moves well, he's good on defense and hitting passing shots too. This is why I think Zverev's very successful against the vast majority of players on the tour, because even if they're able to beat him for a few points, it takes an extremely high level of play to be able to beat someone like Zverev, someone who's very consistent from the baseline and moves really well. Even if players do occasionally go through stretches where they're playing really well, or they're able to beat him for a few points, because he moves so well and it's so hard to hit winners against him, it's very hard to generate offense against him and effect effectively attack, especially because he doesn't wear down and he doesn't really make errors deep into rallies. Pretty much the way players try to beat him is they have to hit really powerful shots and they have to hit really close to the lines or they have to really effectively use drop shots to try to make him uncomfortable. And that's rarely gonna be, the, be successful for players over the course of the match, meaning it's very hard to play extremely high level points more than 50% of the time and be successful. But when you play really, really good players such as Alcaraz or other big stages of Grand Slams, um, the players have the tools and they have the ability to raise their game and find more ways to be successful and hurt their opponents. And I think this is something that really hurts Zverev in the final against Alcaraz um, and it's hurt him in other Grand Slams too, why he hasn't quite been able to reach the pinnacle of success 
and uh, become the top player at a Grand Slam. Uh, my point with that being, with Zverev being a very consistent player, he doesn't necessarily make a lot of errors, but he lets opportunities to go on attack or take control of the point pass him by. When he gets short balls or opportunities to put pressure on the opponent, he often doesn't take full advantage of them and instead goes back into more of a neutral, grindy, uh, baseline style of point and extending the point. And while against most players, he's usually able to win that point and he doesn't necessarily lose anything by not taking advantage of an earlier opportunity and because he's able to win the point with his uh, ground strokes, but at the very highest level of tennis where it's difficult to consistently beat people from the baseline, such as against a Djokovic or a Alcaraz or any other player like that, any opportunity you let pass or you don't make the absolute mo most of, it's a weakness and a shortcoming in your game. Especially when it comes to winning a Grand Slam, it's not about playing well necessarily. Playing well is an understatement. It's about reaching the absolute pinnacle of the sport, basically maximizing how good of tennis you can possibly play and doing it in the most important moments. And when you watch Zverev and Alcaraz play, there was a clear tell in that Zverev was um, able to, or Alcaraz was more willing to take risks and more willing to take his chances and points and go on attack and look to take control. Alcaraz is a very creative player. He has a lot of variety in his game. And I think um, a key to his success and his ability to do these things is he has amazing visualization. Pretty much any opportunity that's available to him on the court, he's able to see it in front of him and take advantage of the situation. And in some ways this game, this, this makes his game look a little bit reckless or kind of risky. And a lot of uh, tennis coaches and other fans will kind of question some of the things he does on court because it just seems a little bit too risky or not high enough percentage. For example, he'll go for a little bit too much power on a shot or maybe he'll hit a drop shot when he could have just as easily hit a regular ball. But I think the fact that he sees these possibilities on the court and he's constantly looking for ways to use variety, find new ways to hurt his opponents and take control of the points, um, it's very much to his credit because he becomes a very dangerous player and he becomes very hard to predict. And the opponents know that if they give him, give him any sort of opportunity or uh, chance for Alcaraz to go on attack or hurt them, he's gonna take it. He may not win 100% of those points and he may make some mistakes, but Alcaraz is sending the message that he's willing to take those risks and he's willing to take to go on attack and look to hurt the opponent and try to make them uncomfortable as soon as he gets the opportunity. And basically, yeah, like at any time he senses an opportunity to hurt the opponent, he goes for it and he has full conviction. Meanwhile, Zverev, he's getting similar looks on short balls and opportunities to attack, but because he doesn't quite take full advantage of those, he doesn't completely take the point under his control or look to take time away from the opponent. He's not making, making the most of opportunities and he's letting basically chances to hurt opponents go by and instead going back into a neutral position in the rally. And like I said earlier, that's fine against most opponents, but when you're trying to get every inch you can against your opponent, every single edge possible available to you in terms of winning a Grand Slam, the highest stage of tennis, if you're not making the most of these opportunities and your opponent is, that puts you at a strong disadvantage for the rest of the match. Uh, take Zverev's serve, for example. Uh, I think in pretty much all senses, uh, Zverev has an overall better serve than Alcaraz. Not that every serve from Zverev is better than every serve from Alcaraz, but if I had to pick one or the other, I think most players and myself would uh, consider Zverev's serve to be a little bit better shot or more deadly. And to respond to this, Alcaraz stood really deep behind the baseline, similar to where Nadal or Medvedev would stand, basically to take away the possibility and a potential for an ace on Zverev's serve. So even if he's serving really fast, because Carlos Alcaraz is, is standing so far deep behind the court, it, he's pretty much trying to take away, he's trying to get take any serve he can get and just force it back in play. Try to take away the possibility for Zverev getting an ace. Um, and this isn't necessary, it shouldn't necessarily be a problem for Zverev because with Carlos Alcaraz standing so deep, he's not able to get power on the shot or hit a very dangerous shot. And instead he just has to lob the ball back into court and try to look to get back into a better position in the rally. Um, 
But Zverev isn't able to take full advantage of this situation. If someone like Carlos Alcaraz was facing this situation with a deep returner, he'd be very comfortable stepping inside the court and taking the ball early or even looking to finish off with a volley the same way he does when he plays Daniel Medvedev. He's very effective against Medvedev because when Medvedev returns very deep against him, he's comfortable finishing points at the net. But because Zverev can't really finish points at the net, he's not able to take advantage of Alcaraz's uh, return position. Because Alcaraz is so deep, he pretty much has to lob back. Zverev has opportunities to close those points out of the net and finish the point early, but he doesn't have the skills or the confidence to fully take advantage of those situations and step inside the court and take away time from his opponent. So instead what happens, Alcaraz lobs the ball back into court and now Zverev has to stand deep behind the baseline because not only can he not really volley, but he can't really take the ball early either, either meaning he can't play a forehand or a backhand on a short hop. He has to stand deep behind the court and get back into a neutral rally. So even though he's still kind of in control of the point, like he gets, it's a very comfortable first ball for him. He doesn't have the same level of offense or aggression that could have been available to him. And because he's not able to attack right away, Carlos Alcaraz is able to get back into the point and able to get into a much more comfortable situation than he would have been if Zverev could effectively close out the net and finish with some volleys. You saw this clearly play out in the fifth set, that the match really changed at one all in the fifth set when Zverev was serving. And you could see that he missed a ton of volleys at the net just because he's not confident with the shot. He either doesn't have the mental or the technique or something, but he, he consistently made errors when he got volleys in the front of the court. And this does two things. One, he loses the point, and so that's really bad on his serve, but it takes away his confidence going forward. So now he thinks, when I'm coming to the net, I'm missing the volley, or I'm not cover, covering the net properly, and Alcaraz has chance, chances to hit winners on me. So I'm gonna stay back at the, at the baseline now. And now Alcaraz senses that. He knows the Arab's not gonna look to take the ball early and come forward and finish at the net. Alcaraz can throw up deep balls and just stay in the rally till he gets the chance to attack. So when you're watching the match, you see Zverev he very hesitant to go for his shots. He looks, he, he's very confident on defense, hustling after shots, but if he gets a short ball and an opportunity to put pressure on Alcaraz, he's very scared to go for it and instead plays it safe. Then in return, if Alcaraz gets a slight opening against Zverev, he's taking full advantage, looking to take control of the point, and he's going on attack, and more often than not, he's hurting Zverev in those big points. There's a saying in tennis, but it probably goes, uh, it probably applies to all sports, that fortune favors the brave. Because Alcaraz is able to take advantage of opportunities in the point, and Zverev is letting them slip by, he's le leaving potential on the table, and you can't leave basically any opportunity unmaximized at the pinnacle of the sport if you're trying to win a Grand Slam. So I hope a lot of my comments made sense. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed the final, please let me know. Or if you have any other thoughts, leave them in the comments. And thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.